And then Kelly's by himself. So it's 15, 15 max, then about five minute break, and then 15 minutes with Kelly. <laughs> it's on it's on um if you go to ncaa.com slash media hub you can download it from there you, you'll have to sign up for an account but yeah yeah it yeah every everything from thursday and friday should be up and today should be up in a pretty timely fashion Okay, Oregon should be in momentarily, and I know you guys have all been through the drill, but I'll give you the reminders once again because they, they tell me I have to. So make sure your cell phones are on silent, no flash photography, uh, no video during the press conference. You can either uh, download it off NCAA.com slash Media Hub, or uh, you can plug in in the uh, video room. Name and affiliation before each question that you ask, and uh, especially since we have five up here, if you do want to address a question to uh, multiple athletes, uh, please indicate the first athlete who you'd like to have answer the question. That'll make things easier for our transcribers, and we will be beginning momentarily. Water bottle off the table, please. Thank you. <laughs> Real quick, yeah. Before the video starts. Are you not sponsored by NCAA? No. Oh. No. NCAA, you keep changing it up now. Yeah, I know. It's like bottling. <laughs> All right, we have with us the five starters from the University of Oregon, beginning down to uh, uh, to my far end, Satu Sabali, Aaron Boley, Ruthie Hebert, Maite Gorzola, and Sabrina Ionescu. Uh, ladies, thank you for being here, and uh, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Right over here on the right. Ryan Thorburn with the Register Guard. Uh, my question is for Ruthie. Ruthie, obviously you played a great game against McGowan in the first meeting. What are the challenges of repeating that or or countering whatever adjustments they're going to have for you? Yeah, um, she's a great player, so I'm going to have to try again to just get low and be really strong physical and depend on my teammates a lot. So hopefully that works out tomorrow, and I know we're going to give it all. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Satu, you said last night that you wanted Mississippi State again because you hadn't played well against them. I'm guessing you've watched the film at least once. Mm -hmm. What do you think that you did wrong that game, or what can you do better this game? Um, I mean, I just um, wasn't that dialed in offensively. I did a couple of mistakes, but, I mean, on the other hand, my team really stepped up, and, like, uh, our bench had a huge game, so Audie played a huge game. So... Um, I mean, everyone can have a bad day, and that was my bad day. So just coming out and being a good player. Okay, Sabrina, you're not going to answer the question I want to ask about leaving early. So this is what I'm going to ask you instead. When you were becoming a top player, when you were in high school, developing into this awesome prospect, I'm sure you saw – paid attention to all the guys who were becoming top prospects and talked about doing one and done and going pro. So 
you seem to be a pretty big advocate for the game. When you were younger, was there a part of you that thought, like, why aren't the opportunities available t for women to leave early? Why isn't that enticing to them? Is that something you want for the game? Um, I mean, looking back on it back then, I don't think I ever thought about that because I never thought I was going to be in this position. Um, but now kind of going through it and, and learning more about the game, um, I do think that there should be equal opportunity for both men and women regardless of, you know, the pay the pay gap between the two sports. Um, but, I, I mean, I'm still learning things now. I didn't know I was even eligible to leave until I saw it on social media. And so mm -hmm. I had no, absolutely no idea that I was even going to be given that opportunity um, besides, you know, a few months ago. And so um, I think that should be talked about more. And I think, you know, girls at a younger age should definitely be given that um, knowledge because they could take, um, you know, different steps, you know, going through high school and going through college uh, in their basketball careers and in school. James Carby with the Oregonian. For Sabrina and Ruthie, before the season, we had talked about how you guys had the photo of the Tampa skyline in the locker room and just your feelings about that before the season. Now that you're at this stage again and have the opportunity to get there, what is right, right or wrong? A lot of people are going to judge the success or failure of this season based on reaching that point. Now that you're at this stage and at this point, what is the feeling heading into this that you can reach that goal? Um, I mean, ultimately, it's just another game for us. Um, it's just another opportunity, uh, opportunity for us to continue to get better, to, con to continue to grow as a team, individually, collectively. Um, so at the end of the day, it's just another basketball game. But ultimately, we are trying to win this game, and we are trying to get further than we have these last couple years, at least with this core group. Um, and I think that's that's what's going to separate us, especially as a as a more mature and, and veteran group. I think we want to get better and we want to do more than we have in the past. And so I think just, you know, coming into this year, we had Tampa written all over our locker room and, and that was our ultimate goal because that's what is ultimately going to set us apart. Ruthie? Yeah, I'm really excited and hopefully we make it to Tampa, but we have one more test beforehand and I think we're all up to the task. Ken? Yeah, this is for Sabrina. Uh, uh, a little bit the question that was asked Ruthie early, earlier, what do you remember from that first game with Mississippi State as far as that uh, – McGowan Ruthie matchup and how important do you see that as being to tomorrow's game? Um, I mean, it's it's going to be huge. That's that's their um, key player. That's their best player. That's one of the best players in the in the country, and so um, she she didn't have her best game against us uh, at our place. And you know, credit to Ruthie and to our team. But we know that tomorrow she's not going to let that happen again, especially with a Final Four on the line. And so we're going to have to be able to learn and adjust and play better than we did uh, down at our place. And Beth. Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. Ruthie, you talked about kind of the challenge of defending McCowan, but at the other end, putting her in a bunch of ball screens, what kind of opportunities did that create for you and your guards? Yeah, putting her in a bunch of ball screens, we knew um, we would get a lot of shots off then, so having our guards go off, turn the corner, um, getting dump offs and just all that. I mean, Taylor even played a great game. I remember that, so that's going to work a lot tomorrow, I hope, as well. Okay. Rob Mosley with Oregon Maite. I wonder defensively the challenge between – your game last night and the game tomorrow, just how dramatically different defensively of a, of a challenge are, are these two games? I mean, we're going to have to be dialed in defensively, you know? We're going to have to rebound, all five have to rebound, and I think that's what it's going to come to. Wait, don't you? Uh, Sabrina, I think there's a good argument to be made that Maite is the most underrated player in the Pac-12. She does so much for you guys. Uh, she's your best perimeter defender. But what I really wondered was, you have a lot of success because you have a really high basketball IQ, and so does she. What's it like to play with another guard who's just so smart? Um, I mean, it's awesome. We don't really have to communicate a lot to understand what, what we're trying to accomplish on the court. Um, I mean, we just feed off of each other. I just have to look at her. She looks at me, and we know where we're going to go, and we know what needs to be done. And so um, I give a lot of credit to her for everything that I've done, for everything that this team's accomplished just because of um, the fact that she doesn't get recognized a lot just because of how many stars we have on this team. But she's just as important as everyone else. She's been here when you know this team wasn't very good, and she's, she's still here when the team's at their best. And so um, – her, her composure and, and her basketball IQ and just her ability to contribute as soon as she steps on the court is something that we definitely don't take for granted. Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. Aaron, what was it like last year in the tournament not being able to help your, your teammates and kind of having to watch, and what does it mean now to have the opportunity to help them you know, take the next step? 
Um, yeah, it was really hard last year. Um, uh, it was a really exciting year, and obviously they um, were playing Notre Dame in the Elite Eight, so um, it was tough to have to sit out, but um, I was already really excited to be able to play and to be able to come in and help, so just to be at this point now um, is awesome, and um, you know I'm going to do whatever I can to help this team um, make it one step further than we did last year. My question's also for Aaron. Aaron, two-parter, I guess. Why did you guys struggle so much from three? Was that South Dakota State's defense, or were you guys just off? And is it almost a must that you hit some threes to, to open up uh, the offense against Mississippi State, considering who's in the paint? Um, I think our shooting has a lot to do with us. Um, <laughs> and you know we're confident going into the next game as a team. Um, but there's a lot of different parts to our offense. Um, you know. We have, you know, always five different people on the floor that can do different things. So I don't think it's a make or break for us. But we, you know, we're moving, we're moving on from that last game and forgetting about it. And we're going to be confident going into the next one. For Sabrina, uh, James Crepe with the Oregonian. Uh, for Sabrina, uh, Taylor had such a huge impact in the first game, and I think she found you on an assist. I think you found her uh, on a pretty big basket there in the third quarter. <laughs> How big a role do you think she can have in what would be her first game back from this injury? I know she was suited up but didn't play last night. Just how big an impact do you think she can have? Um, I mean, the, the sky's the limit for, for her, and I think she knows that. Just her will to win and do whatever it takes for, for um, our team to succeed is what she's going to do night in and night out, regardless of if it's scoring none and, and giving up um, the ball to us in order for us to score or, or defending and, and chasing uh, Bibby off, off those screens. She's going to do whatever uh, we need her to do. And if she plays tomorrow, great. If she doesn't, great. I think uh, we have, um, we're have we right where we want to be in, and everyone's going to have to step up a little more in, in order to take what, um, what what she's not able to give us. Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. Sabrina, similar to what I asked Ruthie earlier, what opportunities did you see putting McCowan in ball screens create in that first matchup? Um, I mean, the floor opened up. She's such a big uh, inside presence that when you bring her towards the outside, that whole paint o opens up. And so that's going to give um, bigger guards like Aaron and uh, Satu the ability to go inside on their smaller guards. That's going to give us the ability for driving lanes. It's going to give Ruthie the ability to roll down and uh, be unguarded in that pick and roll. We can come off. We can look for the shot. We can rescreen and have her uh, chase us around on the outside, which hopefully over a 40-minute game is going to tire her out. And so um, just continuing to find uh, weaknesses that, that we can pinpoint and, and use against them is what we're going to do. And that's not going to be the only thing that's going to work for us tomorrow. I think just watching film, um, we didn't play our best game over at our place, and we still, we still ended up with a win. And so I think we have to learn from that and not settle with, with what we had accomplished at our place and uh, continue to grow. So there's going to be a lot of areas where we're going to pinpoint and figure out what we need to do to win, not only just in the McGowan ball screen. Uh, for Ruthie and Satu, there Mississippi State's very, very physical. Um, Charlie from ASU talked about that last night. That it's really hard to simulate that when you're getting ready for them. So I wondered, especially when you played them in December, how did you guys get ready for that? Did you have to like guard Coach Graves in the paint instead <laughs> to practice? He, he actually <laughs> he did actually jump in. Wanted to be the <laughs> he wanted to be here. I mean, we, we practiced it a lot, just Chavi and yeah, Coach Graves just banging us up a little bit. Um, we played it against ourselves and Lydia all just banging against each other, and it was good. It wasn't, um, I mean, she's super physical, so that's going to be the main point of the game. But, yeah, we banged up on each other Coach quite a bit. Though. Coach isn't the best yeah. defender, <laughs> so McGowan. he wasn't the <laughs> <laughs> That's incomparable. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also had, like, great practice players, um, and they push us every day in our practices. So um, just going against the guys, and they get hyped up <laughs> when, like, Noah or something wants to just be McGowan. Um, yeah, just going against men, I feel like, who have that kind of power uh, helps a lot in our practices. And, yeah, if not, we'll just have to buckle up a little bit. Got time for one or two more questions right back there. Hi, Natalie Weiner, SB Nation. Um, obviously, a lot of the focus is on Tierra, but are there any Mississippi State players like other ones who aren't Tierra who you guys are really focusing on sort of in your film study? Sabrina? I mean, yeah, one, one through one through eight that they play. Uh, to be honest, Enriel Howard is one of the best uh, four men in the uh, four women, I guess, 
um, in the country. They've been to two national championship games. They've been in this position uh, numerous times. And so uh, you can never win uh, just with one person. And so that team is just so tightly knit. That coach coaches them so well um, that they're prepared. They've been in this moment. You know, they've been further than this moment. And so it takes a team in order for them to win. And, and the pieces that she has around her makes her excel at a really high level. And so we're going to have to take care of, of all their players and, and not just her, although she is, you know, one of the focus points that we have. Got time for one more question. All right, ladies, thank you so much. Thank Best of luck you. tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all do not want to see that. <laughs> I gladly share. <laughs> okay, just uh, one quick reminder. Please do say name and affiliation before each question. You ask this for the transcribers. They're working remotely, so they can't look and go, okay, Lindsay's asking, Ken's asking. So that would be very helpful. All right, we're with Oregon head coach uh, Kelly Graves. Uh, any opening statement yeah. you'd like to make or just we'll, we'll dive right work. in? Huh? <laughs> Start right over here. Ryan Thorburn with the Registered Guard. Kelly, obviously you guys have a lot of tournament experience your third time in the Elite Eight, but what are the challenges of playing a team that's been to the national championship the last two years, and their goal is to take it even one step further from that? Yeah, I think that's been their uh, saying right from the start, right? Unfinished business, and uh, so we know we're going to get a very – you know, experienced team, but a determined team. You know, they've had their eye to this. They've been here before. Uh, they've won twice at this in this game. We have yet to do that. So, you know, we want to break through that ceiling. We don't want to be just an Elite Eight program. We want to be a Final Four and, and perhaps a national championship program. So, um, yeah, until you do it for the first time, you know, you, you don't really have that blueprint. Well, they've done it. So, um, 
you know, now we, we, we want to make sure that that's us this, this time. Ken and then Quincy. Uh, Ken Go with the Oregonian. You had uh, some success with a combination defense against Mississippi State last time. What, you know, made that defense work? And is it the kind of thing you can try it out two times in a row? <laughs> yeah, you wonder who has the advantage, the team that, uh, you know, can adjust to how they were played last time or, or the one that, you know, had the success. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. I, I know we're going to have to try everything. That's that's the the main thing. I think they're one of the up, the best offensive teams in the country. Uh, I don't think you can just do one thing because you know Coach Schaefer's too smart. They will adjust to that. And so I think you know, like against most really good teams, you just have to mix things up. You have to give them different looks. Uh, obviously, you start with uh, Tierra inside. I mean, she is an incredible player and uh, an immovable force, so to speak. Uh, you look at Mount Hood out there in the distance, and you could put Tierra right next to it because they're the two, you know, uh, tallest uh, things in the, you know, in this area right now. And she's, uh, I'm telling you, she's incredible. But she has others around her. You know, it's funny they lost four seniors last year, really good seniors, and and I looked at their starting lineup again. They have another four seniors in it. I mean, they just uh, they've reloaded and they've done it with uh, you know a great system. Great athleticism, great coaching, and, and lots of talent. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Kelly, you've coached two transcendent point guards, first Courtney at GU and now Sabrina. And I wondered two things. Number one, how do great players make you a better coach? <laughs> and then did you learn anything in coaching Courtney that has helped you bring out the best in Sabrina? Well, they've both inspired me to be a better coach. I, I feel like I have to be prepared. I have to give my best each and every day because I know they always did. And so I have to, to live up to their standard. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've been fortunate. You, really, you, you nailed it. Two of the, to the best college point guards ever. And um, I see some similarities in the two. I think what sets those two apart from all the others that I've coached and, and a lot that I've seen play it's just their competitiveness and their their determination each and every day. I mean, you know, we we talked last night about Sabrina diving into the the scores table and then the opposing team's bench and it over loose balls. Well, that's how they play every day, and uh, that's what Courtney always brought. Uh, she was the first one in the gym. I know it's a cliche and the last one to leave, but it's the case. And the, those are the the kind that do it. And then the the time they put in when you're not watching. You know, I, I, I know who's going in that gym. We get printouts of who's in and out of the gym, right, uh, with their cards. So, yeah, I've just been blessed. I mean, truly blessed to, to be able to coach two, two players like that. I don't, does that answer your question? Is there a follow-up? Yeah, no, I, I did wonder if they were similar. Like, you know, can you maybe say different? I, I think the vision, if you had to look at just one thing that they did better than any, is their vision. You know, they, they see things, you know, they know players are open before that player knows they're open. And they just, they, they understand angles, you know, in passing. And, and I think those are the two things that have set those two apart from any of the players that I've coached. Okay. Hey, Coach, Robbie Falk from Starkville Daily News. Uh, was interested in your thoughts watching film on, on State, whether it be when they played in Eugene or, uh, you know, moving forward, how improved McCowan is from that game to this point? I think that was really the only game she seemed really flustered with what y'all were doing defensively. Uh, she's been defended similarly and, and yeah. seems to have handled it a little bit better. What have you seen from her since that day? Well, I think that's what's made her so strong. I just think she's been consistent all year long. I mean, against us, it wasn't her best night. Um, and, and credit, you know, our defense. I thought we played really well that night, especially Ruthie and Lydia. They, they did the yeoman's uh, share of, of work on them or on her that night. But, uh, no, I mean, she, she is what she is. I mean, and, and I think the way they play, I, I really credit, you know, Vic for he, he's created the perfect style to fit her. You know, if you if you help on penetration, they just lob it to her and it's a layup. And if you don't help on the penetration, then the guards make the layups. I mean, it, it's you know, it's it's a difficult thing to to game plan for. You know, what are you going to try and take away? A layup by the guard, or a layup from a gown. And and the, the truth is, she just doesn't miss many. Um, 
you know, so yeah, we're going to employ some of the same things we did last time. And then we've worked on and will work on some new things. So we, we've just got to keep it a little bit fresh. Cause like I said, they're just too smart and uh, she's just too good of a player who has help by the way, she has help. It's not a one person show. Okay, so I asked Ru Lindsay, Lindsay Schnell, <laughs> USA Today, sorry. So I asked Ruthie, uh, you guys had talked about how physical Mississippi State is, kind of hard to simulate that in practice. And I said, so like in December, what'd you do to get ready for that? Did you have to like play against Coach Graves? And Sabrina said you wanted to be Tierra McCown, but you're really soft. And <laughs> True. I'd much rather stand out and shoot threes. I'm more <laughs> Boris Diaw <laughs> than Tierra McCowan. Yeah. Well, that was what I wondered was what your um, assessment of her scouting report was of you, if it was accurate. So it sounds like you do agree. Well, I was always a three-point shooter, but as it get older, by the way, that never leaves. You know, that's the last skill that you lose. You know, and I've the, the, the most frustrating part about being a practice player from time to time, and I do have to step in, is – I know what I want to do, but I'm incapable of doing it. <laughs> or if I make that move, they've already beaten me to the to the spot. But uh, yeah, what was the rest of that? <laughs> that, that was it. I just what your was. So they're trash talking, huh? Well, I'll get out there today. <laughs> I'll lay my 240 pounds on Ruthie. <laughs> Ryan Thorburn with the Register Guard. Kelly, uh, the three-point shooting last night was that what South Dakota State was doing, or was that an off night? And is it going to be critical to open up the spacing by knocking some of those down against this team? Yeah, I think, you know, we're the best three-point shooting team in the country. And so, you you know, we're not going to have nights like that. Four for 20 was, you know, I thought we took good shots. We had a lot of open looks, and they just, you know, didn't go. Uh, we can't have another night like that, or we're going to be in big trouble tomorrow, no, no doubt. But... Uh, no, I have confidence in our players, and I think it was just one of those things that happen, and they happen from time to time. And that's why, you know, we've preached all the time, all year long, and, and all the years I've been there and coached, that you've got to be able to rely on that defense. And I thought defensively, we were really, really strong last night. So, you know, that, that to, to know that we were off our shooting game and can still win by double digits, uh, I think is a, is a good sign. Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. How important was it for you guys to put uh, McCowan in ball screens as frequently as you did in the first matchup? Well, yeah, that's what we do. And, uh, and you know, we try to, to spread people out and, and make the centers guard us. I mean, that's no secret. Uh, I don't know how they'll adjust, uh, but we were fortunate to, to get some really good looks at the rim last time. I don't think they're going to allow us to do that this time, so we have to be ready to adjust in whatever uh, to whatever they do. But... Yeah, I mean, that's no secret. That's how we play. We want to spread the floor and make centers defend us in the pick and roll. And, uh, yeah, so I don't think I'm giving anything away. <laughs> yeah, look. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Kelly, you've coached a lot of good players, and you've been coaching a long time. I know that we've still got some time left. We're not going to talk about if Sabrina's going to leave early yet. But did you ever think – especially when you got first got into coaching, that we'd ever be having this conversation even about there's a lot of chatter about are her and Jackie at Notre Dame going to go early. Mm -hmm. Is it weird to you that we're even having this conversation in women's basketball, or is it a good thing? Is it a step toward equality? Well, I think it's I think it's a good thing, no no question about it. I mean, obviously we want her to stick around, but, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's great. It, in, in the bigger picture, I, I believe all of these young people, men and women, should be able to make that choice right out of high school. I mean, if I look at my son, uh, who is a math whiz, and if Microsoft came to him and said, you know what, we would love for you to you know, come work for us. Uh, we'll pay you $3 million a year or whatever that salary is, but you can't, you can't go to college. You're going to be a pro. You know, we would encourage him to go, so I don't know why it's any different with athletes. Um, so I, I think that's great. That's that's the way our uh, system operates. And um, so good on her, good on Jackie, if that's what they decide. But, uh, you know, being a college student athlete is is special and it's a lot of fun. And uh, I think what uh, what they're experiencing, both both of them in particular, just to use two examples, I think is in, is incredible. They've got to be enjoying this ride. Right there in the back. Hey, Natalie Weiner, uh, SB Nation. Um, 
you guys, this is sort of more of a season long question, but it seems like, you know, UConn is usually sort of the center of the women's college basketball universe, but you guys have been getting sort of more national attention maybe than any other program besides them. And it seems like sort of a new thing, you know, over the past year or so. What has the adjustment to that been like for you and what if, how has it impacted your team? Uh, that's a really good question. Well, first of all, I think it's deserved. This is a fun group. They, they play good basketball. They're unselfish. I think they, when you watch them, they play with lots of joy, and, and they have fun doing what they're doing. Uh, I don't think it's changed us at all. I mean, Sabrina is just as humble as she always is, but, you know, you look every week, there's a new national article or video feature on her, and, you know, I don't think it's really changed her at all, uh, you know, and... and uh, uh, same with the others. I think they're very humble kids. Uh, you, you just saw them all. I don't know if Aaron said much. Did Aaron say much? Okay, Ruthie probably had a big old smile and it just, you know, happy-go-lucky. Uh, you know, Satu is, is more kind of thoughtful. And, uh, you know, and then Sabrina is as polished a student-athlete as you're ever going to see in, in front of a microphone. Uh, they're just, uh, they're really good kids. And Maite probably didn't say much, <laughs> right? That's, and that's how she plays. You know, she is a superstar who's got a chance to play in the WNBA, but she's very happy playing kind of a secondary role in terms of who's getting the attention. And, and so I'm just really blessed to, to have a really nice young women who, um, who play their hearts, you know, they play for each other and they play really, really hard. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of them and love each and every one of them. Again, I don't know if that answers your question or not. I just kind of sorry about that. Next, Lindsay. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Uh, Kelly, you said last night, you know, that you guys have been open from the beginning about, hey, we want to play in Portland. The players were talking earlier before you came in here about they want to go to Tampa. A lot of coaches shy away from that and, you know, oh, we're just focused on the next game, whatever. Why did you make that decision to be bold and honest with them from the get-go about these are our goals and it's okay for us to say them out loud? Well, we didn't really do it that way, I think, until recently. And I, I think uh, – I'm glad if that's what they were saying before. I think for the most part we've, we've talked about just the next game, the next game, the next game. But I think it's – Come on. I mean, we'd all rather be playing close to home. I, I don't think there was any, um, you know, any doubt about that. That's no secret. Um, but we had to earn that right. We had to win the Pac-12 championship outright, and, uh, and we did the regular season one. So, and to me, that's the toughest. Um, good. I'm, I'm glad. Like I said at the, at the start, I, you know, we don't want to be an Elite Eight program. We've done this now three times in a row. You know, we want to take that next step, and I think we've worked hard enough to, to earn that right to do it, uh, and now we just got to go do it. And this is a great, you know, um, circumstance for us we're we're in a, in a great position to make that happen and we know mississippi state's an amazing team they are so you know and they want it just as bad and have worked just as hard to earn that right Beth? kevin pelton espn.com coach you answered natalie's question thoughtfully yeah. talking about the players but you didn't mention has the increased intention attention gone to your head <laughs> well, yeah, I don't have much of an ego, really, uh, so no, and they're not, they're not coming to see me. I mean, if you're coming to look at this and this body of mine, then we're in big trouble. But they have handled, I think, that, that pressure, uh, I think, better than they could have. You know, it's, it's really funny. This, it's like traveling with rock stars. I mean, seriously, the shout-outs they get on Twitter from big-time pros, you know, LeBron, everybody else. Kobe comes to our game. They call us two days before we're playing at USC. You know, Kobe's assistant, hey, he's bringing his daughter and her friends. They're all Duck fans. They want to meet the team after the game. I mean, you know, you go to play at Washington, Sue Bird's, you know, across from, the, from our bench. Uh, our governors come to a couple of our home games. Our Senator Ron Wyden, you know, came down during furlough. Uh, you know, when we had the, uh, the state employees or the federal employees could come for free. He took advantage of it, brought a whole group down from, from Salem. Uh, and, and if you look at the nine Pac-12 teams that, that we played, the road games, their average attendance was 2,700 on the air when we played them it was 5200 so it almost doubled so a we're getting a lot of duck fans that travel b there are a lot of people that 
that are interested in this group because there's some star power there. We, we do play a fun style. Uh, we've gotten a lot of the national attention. And so I think they're kind of used to this. It's not a big deal. Uh, but I love what they've created. I mean, you walked into that place last night. This is incredible. You know, we're, we're not at home. This isn't a home game, but, you know, we're, we've got a lot of fans that have traveled and that are interested in this group. So uh, I think it's great, and it's great for women's basketball. I truly would love to see Portland host a Final Four. We have two of the best fan bases right here in the country in Oregon State and Oregon. And, uh, and we had a third NCAA tournament team from, from at Portland State. So this is, uh, and I think we're showing that, that we can support something like that here. So the Final Four hasn't been on the West Coast in a while. I think it's time for it to come back. One last question. James Crepe with the Oregonian. Kelly, you haven't shied away from the expectations of this team all season, even before the season. You guys had the picture of the Tampa skyline in the locker room, that being the goal. For a lot of casual fans, success or failure will be whether or not you guys reach that. So two-part or what do you say to those about that that's the mindset heading into tomorrow? And two, how do you define success of this team this season? Well, we've never said Tampa or bust or anything like that. I, you know, what people want to say, they're going to say. I mean, we, we have talked most of the year, really, in terms of just the next game, the next game, the next game. And I think we've compartmentalized that pretty well. Uh, maybe some are starting to say a little bit more, but that's always been our focus. And if, and if things don't go well tomorrow, then I'm not going to look upon that as a, a, a failure of a season. You know, we, we've won another Pac-12 championship. We've put ourselves into a position to do it. You know, the other day I was watching the men's tournament, you know, on, the, on our off day, and there are some really good teams in that Sweet 16 who were going home. And the fact that we've gotten this far three years in a row, I mean, it's hard. It is not easy to do. And we've started, you know, th this thing five years ago and have really made a quick climb. It just doesn't happen in women's basketball very often. And it doesn't happen in power conferences very often to make it, you know, to go from really the bottom to now back-to-back Pac-12 championships. So, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play that game. We're gonna go out and give it our best tomorrow, and and I hope we win. And we're gonna play hard enough to win. And and if we do, we're gonna be really happy. Uh, we'll be humble, but we'll be happy. And if we don't, we're gonna be sad, but we're not gonna look back and say, man, this was this was a failure. So we only really care about care about what, you know, we think of ourselves. You know, I, I don't really worry about what others say. You know. And, and how they want to uh, judge us, you know, that, that's up to them. But I'm really, I'm proud of this group, and, and I hope we can go further because I think they've worked hard for it, and this is something that they've wanted. So. All right, we are out of time. Coach, thank you All very right. much. Uh, see you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Mississippi State's uh, five starters will be in at uh, 215. That'll be uh, Henriel Howard, Tierra McCowan, Andre Espinosa Hunter, Jasmine Holmes, and Jordan Danbury. Again, that's a 215.
All right, before we get started, your, your usual reminders. So you, you know the drill, but um, cell phones on silent, no flash photography, no video. Uh, press conference will be posted soon after at uh, ncaa.com slash media hub. Please say name and affiliation before each question asked, and that's uh, mainly for the transcribers who are working remotely. And if you want to address a question to all five or a set of the athletes, please designate which athlete you want to have answer the question first, and we'll make sure that the question gets around. Here goes my mojo. <laughs> All right, we are here with the starting five from Mississippi State. We have Jasmine Holmes and Riel Howard, Andre Espinoza Hunter. Jordan Danbury and Tierra McCowan. We'll go ahead and uh, open up for questions at this time. In back. Tierra, Courtney Robb, WCBI News. That game against Oregon the last time you guys played was one of the few times this season that you haven't had a double double. I know you were in foul trouble, but what else went wrong there? Um, just didn't execute the game plan that the coaches gave us. Just one of those nights, you know, can't have them, but we did. Over here. Ryan Thorburn with the Register Guard. I'll ask Jordan, uh, having played Oregon in the state of Oregon and, you know, seeing them this season, how much does that help you guys get prepared for this game? Um, you know, we're a completely different team than last time we played them. Um, we've played in Oregon before against, you know, their crowd. They have a big crowd, big fan base because we're right here in, you know, the state. Um, I guess, I don't know, I won't have no other way, really. I want to play here in front of their fan base again and come out with a win. Over here first. Tyler Horka, Jackson, Clary, and Ledger. Jordan, you fouled out of that first game against Oregon earlier this year. Uh, given what Sabrina Ionescu can do, and I if that's your assignment, I'm sure you'll, you'll be guarding her a lot. How important is it for you to stay on the floor and, and stay engaged in this game tomorrow? Um, I think it's important. I mean, uh, she's a great player. She's an All-American. Um, I'm going to stay out of foul trouble this time in the game so I can be out there to help my teammates. Uh, I got great teammates around me to, to play help defense as well, so I think we'll be all right all collectively guarding her. In the back. Rachel Orchlinski, WLBT TV. Jordan, you said this is a completely different team. If you don't mind expanding on that, what exactly is different uh, entering this game with Oregon? Just our, our mindset, our defense. Um, that was in non-conference. We played a lot more games together, got a lot more chemistry. Um, on the defensive end as well as the offensive end, so we're just in we're just a different team as far as expanding like our talents and our, what we can do. Over here. 
Grant Stefanik, KVAL, Eugene. Anriel, last time around, you dropped 30 against Oregon. How did you find success against them? And can you also speak about the physicality of that game? There were 50 combined free throws from both teams in that game. Um, I just believe that my teammates, uh, they found me um, in the open areas, open spots, jazz. Uh, they're really good at finding me. And um, even Tierra, she, um, when they doubled off her, I would just try to find the soft spot. But everybody played a role um, in just finding me in the open areas, and I was able to knock down shots. Um, but last game, it was uh, last time we played them, it was very physical. Um, we expect the same thing. We're used to it. We're in the SEC that comes every night, so we'll be ready. Up here in front. Tyler Horka, Jackson, Clary, and Ledger. Tierra, uh, Kelly Graves, Oregon's head coach, was this in here. He compared you to Mount Hood. Um, that's like an 11,000-foot-tall stratovolcano here in Oregon. Is that the craziest thing that you've been – I'm sure you've been compared to a lot of things given your height. Is that the craziest thing? And, and what do you think about that? Um, um, <laughs> that is crazy, but I, I don't know. Yeah. No comment. I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> Let's go back there first. Sean Meadow, Daily Emerald. Tierra, how do you prepare for a matchup with Ruthie Hebert after what happened in Eugene in December? Um, I prepare normally, you know. I just know that I have to be better for my teammates. I have to be focused, dialed in, and I can't, you know, just do what I did last game. I went back and looked at it. I wasn't, you know, doing what I normally do. I wasn't the normal T. So I know this time around I'll be good. My team will be better. So we'll be fine. Uh, Ken Go, the Oregonian for Tierra. Um, they played some sort of strange combination defense last time. Uh, how much of that, how much did that impact the way you played, or was it, you know, just a bad game on your part? I'm just a bad game on my part, I would say. But their defense is, you know, pretty swarming. You know, they threw everything at me. You know, I didn't react as quick as I would normally. So, I mean, I just have to be prepared for whatever they're going to throw at me. Rick? Oh, you're good? Okay. Come over here. Tyler Horka, Jackson, Clary, and Ledger. Uh, and Andy, you only played five minutes in that first game against Oregon. Obviously, your role is vastly expanded from then. What do you think you can provide um, in that expanded role this time around? Um, just to be able to help guys when they're in full mark on the high screen help. Other questions? All right, hearing none, ladies, thank you very much for your time, and good luck tomorrow. Our scheduled time for uh, head coach Vic Schaefer is 2.35. Thanks again. There is locker room availability. That, uh, let's see here. Hey, Rick. Yeah, locker room's open now.
I don't know. I don't know. I didn't get to see any of it. <laughs> you can bring his phone and do play by play. Sorry, I, sorry, I, I was watching the D2 championship. Okay, yeah. Co Coach is finishing up with ESPN, and he'll be in here, which probably means he's watching the game. There's nine minutes to go. We might be here until the next game. <laughs> no, that's, that's a beatdown. <laughs> Old days. Used to. I don't know I'll put this <laughs> Figure I didn't have to remind you. No, nope, I've done it enough. <laughs> Hold on just a second. <laughs> All right, Mississippi State Head Coach Vic Schaefer, and uh, we will uh, go ahead and open it up for questions. Start over here. Ryan Thorben with the Register Guard. Vic, what role does having played Oregon already in the state of Oregon play and in, in helping you guys get ready for this this game? Sure. I, I think it um, – I don't think there's any question it, it helps you. I think our kids are – you know, they understand they're going to walk into an arena tomorrow night and it's going to be green and a lot of people hollering against you and not many hollering for you. And uh, But we're going to have a few people here. And uh, um, so, I mean, I, but that, that happens in our league a lot. You know, we've played at some great places, some great venues with, you know, pro crowds that are against you. So, I think that's what this team's handled uh, a great deal. So, uh, it does, obviously, you're familiar. We've played them now three straight years. And, uh, you know, Kelly's done a tremendous job. I have so much respect for him and his staff and the, and the team. And, um, you know, we've had some real, real great games with each other and uh, I appreciated him playing us home and home he came to us last year and we returned this year and uh, um, both games were whew, high scoring and uh, really knocked down drag outs in my mind Lindsay Schnell USA Today Vic when you guys played him in Eugene this year they really hurt you on the pick and roll oh. so what I <laughs> You've been watching film. <laughs> so what I wondered is, at this point in the season, you know, how do you make adjustments while still staying true to who you are? You're probably not going to, you know, have a new defensive identity tomorrow. You don't how think do I'm going to come out and play two, three zones tomorrow night? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you do, I think that'd be really interesting. But I just wonder how you straddled that line in making sure your kids are confident, like, hey, we can win with how we've won all year. Right. And, that you know, that's a great point. You know, Daryl Royal used to say you go with what brung you. And, uh, you know, for us, we're a lot better team today than we were three months ago. So is Oregon. So, um, you know, we've, we've got a – We've gone through some ways to, to deal with them a little bit. Uh, we've got plan B and plan C in place in case we have to go to that. Um, but at the same time, I think uh, 
you know, they're going to be who they are. We're going to be who we are. And, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. But, uh, you know, they're just so <clears> – <throat> when we played them earlier in the year, I mean, you just couldn't help off anybody. I mean, and um, they did a tremendous job of spreading you out. If you helped off somebody and you lost ball pressure, they're going to find who's open. And, um, and so for us, you know, uh, and for them it doesn't change. They still got the same personnel. And, um, and so, you know, hopefully we're, we're a little better defensively. Uh, I thought we were really good last night. Uh, against a, a, a really good team, and uh, uh, thought we were really good in the first half at Clemson. You know, against Clemson. So, um, you know, we we've got so many new. We had so many new players at that point in December, um, trying to figure our way, figure it out. Now we've got a different team than that team. No Chloe, and and Andy's playing a lot. So, you know, we're different um, a little bit, and and hopefully in a in a good way. Grant Stepanek, KVAL Eugene. Uh, last time out, Sabrina Ionescu scored 29 points and was 17 for 17 from the free throw line. How do you prevent her from getting to the line so often? Stop fouling her. You know, I think that's the big thing. You just, uh, you know, that's a that's an All American in in so many different ways, and uh, you just can't put her on the free throw line. You know, we down the stretch we made some really um, poor decisions that put her on the line. And, uh, and, you know, we've got to be – hopefully we're smarter today than we were three months ago. We'll make better decisions. But, uh, you know, she's like an 89% free throw shooter, I think, something like that. And so uh, you just can't put her on the line. And, you know, when the game's on the line, that you know, she wants to be in that moment. That's what makes her great. So we got to be better. You know, we got to make better decisions and, and not put her on the line. Robbie Falk, Starville Daily News. Vic, in, in that game against Oregon, Tara just was, was really not on her game. She got into foul trouble early. Eventually, I think you, you pulled her and set her on the bench for most of the fourth quarter. Did y'all have a conversation uh, that kind of changed things for her after that ball game? What was it that, that's allowed her to be so effective even if things aren't going her way, if she's being denied the ball or kept out of the paint? How has she been able to, to maintain her composure and and get back in, into her kind of basketball as the game went on? Yeah, so the answer is yes, we, we had a conversation, but that's probably not the only one since then. Um, you know, she was a bull in the China cabinet the night we got beat by Missouri at home. And <clears throat> I, I, I just mentioned this in, in the locker room to someone else in the media. Most seniors, halfway through their senior year, think they know it all, and they're not very coachable. And I think Tierra, after that Valentine's Day game, um, we had another conversation, and her and Johnny sat and watched film, and she realized she's got to do things a little different and give the kid credit. Uh, she changed. She grew. She, uh, she altered. Uh, and there's some things where she's got to play better. And, uh, uh, again, I think that's why she's such a great player and, and going to just be tremendous uh, at the next level because she is still coachable. And um, so, you know, that night was certainly a frustrating night for all of us, for her. Um, and, um, you know, she's a lot like her coach. She's an emotional kid, um, plays with a lot of passion. And, uh, you know, I have a real appreciation for somebody like that. Rick. Rick Cleveland, Mississippi Today. Vic, did they – did Oregon play it a lot like the team did last night? I mean, like Arizona State did? play the post that way, sagging, beating up on her, all that. You didn't see the game. I didn't. I, I came home from a football game that yeah. night, turned it on. <coughs> yeah, so, I mean. It's a close she, game, and she wasn't in the game. That's right. what really. Yeah, it was, it, was, um, it, was, it was physical down there for sure, yeah. Following up on that question, uh, you guys got to find another topic. <laughs> it, You're trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> they were playing some sort of combination defense a lot of time uh, on her. How much of a factor was that, and how much of it was just her having a not a good game? Well, again, I, I think um, you know they did a great job, and uh, you know they mixed up their defenses. They played some box and one, um, that three two zone they like to play. That's that's big and wide, and they played some man and. And some two three. So I mean, I think you've got to have your whole offensive package ready to go, and your point guard's got to really be 
uh, cognizant of what they're doing. And that's what makes them, again, you know, Kelly's done such a great job with them because they are multidimensional defensively and uh, as well as offensively. I mean, they're just a, they're just a load. They're just a, a handful to deal with. And, uh, and so, you know, when you play somebody like that, I mean, you better be ready. I mean, they, <clears throat> we know we're playing a championship team. They win the Pac-12. I mean, they're, they're really good. And they're good for a reason. They're smart. They're heady. They're tough. Um, they're well coached. And, um, you know, we're going to have to beat them in front of their own people tomorrow night. At, you know, so, you know, they're a, they're a heck of a basketball team. They got great players and uh, may have the best multi skilled player in the game. I mean, if she was a baseball player, you'd call her a five tool player. Yeah, I figured it out. I think she's an eight tool player in women's basketball. She scores at all three levels. She rebounds. She assists. She's your hustle player. She's smart. And you can throw classy and elegance in on top of it. I mean, she's <clears> – <throat> that's, how, that's how good that kid is. So, you know, it, it, when you're going against a team like that and, and, a, and a player like that, you, you really got to – got to play your best game. We didn't play our best game that night. And, and so, you know, we learned from it, and hopefully we'll be better tomorrow night. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Sorry, Vic, I got to ask you about Tierra too. Uh, she looks like she's in really good shape right now. Has she like even lost weight since December? Do you think she's in better shape now? You know, I don't know that she's lost it since December. I think her her frame changed, you know, pretty quick once she got to Startville. And uh, um, look, the kid gets madder than heck at me if I yank her out of a game. She don't like to come out. And uh, you know, she's averaged, I think, 31, 32 minutes on the year. But here in the last five games, um, she's averaging maybe 36, 37. Um, and, uh, you know, again, here we go. You know, over the course of the year, she's averaging 30. But in the last five, she's averaging 34.4. And, and in our conference, she averaged almost 32. So, you know, she she's in great shape. And, uh, you know, I, I give uh, um, Marcy, our strength and conditioning coach, a lot of credit. And, but I give T a lot of credit. Not a lot of big kids like her drag two and three people up and down the floor every night, all night, and stay in the shape and the, and the condition. And, again, you know, y'all saw last night. And that's, it's like that every night for that kid. You just get pounded on and beat on all game long. The kid can take no more shots. She's had as many. She can't have any more. So my my trainer's got to do the job with heat and ice, and um, you know when you think about the course of her career, it's it's been hard. You know it's hard for her down there. Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. Maybe doesn't always translate this literally, but is preparing for moments like this part of why you're willing to go on on the road and play a team like Oregon? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's exactly why you do it. And uh, you know we. We went to Texas and played. We went to Virginia and played. We came out here to Oregon and played. And uh, <clears throat> I'm probably missing one somewhere, but this is why you do it. Do it. And uh, uh, again, our teams, uh, my teams, have always continued to get better in late February and March. And we pride ourselves on being a tough, physical, aggressive basketball team. And and that doesn't say anything about your skill set. But if somebody describes you as a tough, physical, aggressive basketball player, you'd like that. Doesn't say anything about your jump shot. Same thing's true about probably about anybody's football team or baseball team. It doesn't say anything about your Friday night starter that throws 95. But if your baseball team's a tough, physical, aggressive baseball team, you'd probably like that if you were a coach. And I, I think for us, for me as a coach, it's what we've always hung our hat on. And, you know, Overtime games, whenever it gets tough, that's when it just gets about right for us. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Vic, is that the scouting report next to you? I'm just curious. That's a yeah. lot of paper. Do you make the team read the entire thing too? Uh, well, no. Now, these are my notes. You know, but this is – again, we've played them three straight years. So, you know, these are notes that uh, – and Oregon. Yes, this is just Oregon. This is uh, – that's old. This is new. Um, and um, so, yeah, that, that I have this for, you know, I, I keep – I don't throw stuff away. You know, I go back and look at what worked in Hawaii three years ago. And, um, 
wherever else we flight them. And, uh, you know, you just, for me, I'm, I'm an, I've always been a note taker. Uh, doesn't mean I was a good student in college, by the way, but I am a note taker and, uh, and I have this on all of our opponents. So this one's, uh, it's about average. Only played them three times. <laughs> we have time for one more question. <laughs> Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Is there, uh, obviously you are familiar with them, Vic, but is, do they remind you of anyone in the SEC? Is there any team that's like them? Is there any player like Sabrina? You know, um, you know probably um, they're, they're, as a team, no. No one spreads you out like they do uh, and shoots it like they do. You know, maybe in Arkansas as far as just spread you out and try to shoot it. Um, but they've got a little bit they, – they're five players a little bit better. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe Missouri um, as far as the, you know, having that player like her. Um but it, it's – she's just, um, you know, from a competitive standpoint, a competitor, that's probably as close as comparison as, as we can probably find. Um, and that's not saying no one else has one. It's just from a similar standpoint of being able to score at all three levels, um, seeing the floor, makes the great decisions, passing a rebounder, um, playing with heart and passion and all those things. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, – I think that's probably a good comparison. Coach Schaefer, thank you very much for your time, and best of luck tomorrow. All right. Praise the Lord and go dogs.